I ain't trying to hear from the IRS. I don't know about y'all, but I don't need no problems. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin, and this is Erin On Demand, a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand, business, and impact. And y'all, today, we are talking about business mindset. There are so many layers when it comes to business mindset because there is so much that goes into starting a business, owning a business, growing with your business. And so over these past two years, I have learned so much from owning Aaron On Demand and Black and Gold. I really wanted to just kind of compile some of the things that I have learned and kind of mindset shifts that I've had to kind of grow to do because of the growth of my business. And so um, I wanted to share those with you guys today because I think that mindset is such a huge reason why a lot of people, one, don't start their business, two, don't have success with their business. And I recently had a call with Tatiana O'Hara. She is an agency and team operations coach and she basically helps thriving online business owners scale. Okay, so basically as the business owner, you're kind of hitting a, a glass ceiling where you're feeling tapped out, you're feeling like you're doing too much, you may have a team, but like you aren't properly using them. You're just kind of in the crux of growth. And so she kind of helps pull you out of that rut. And honestly, it was one of the best investments that I've made in my business. So that call, I had a five hour call with her. Um, it's called her VIP day and that call really inspired a lot of these talking points. So let's get into them. So the first thing is that you can't do it all. And you guys hear me talk about how I don't think I struggle with wanting to do it all. I definitely realize that I can't do it all and I don't want to do it all. But as a small business owner, a lot of times you get caught up in having your hand in everything. And then it becomes difficult to pull your hands out of the things that you're so used to doing. Like for a year straight, I edited all of my videos. And so naturally it's hard for me to kind of let that go in some senses, or I've made my thumbnails for, you know, two years. And now that we're onboarding, kind of like a YouTube assistant, it is hard for me to see my thumbnails look different. Um, but it's that's just the way that it is. One of the rules of thumb when it comes to hiring is one, hiring for things that I don't want to do anymore. Uh, two, hiring for things that I'm not good at doing or that someone else could do a lot better. And three, hiring for things that I don't have time to do. Even if I like doing them, if I don't have time to do them, and it can be outsourced, then we need to hire someone for those tasks as well. You know, just kind of learning um, how to activate my mind to say, okay, we need to hire someone for this at this point. And that has become kind of weird. I now have a team of about eight people, which is quite crazy to even think about, but um, it takes a lot of work to run the business. And I found myself hiring, like I hired one editor and I realized like that's not enough. Um, so then I hired another editor and then I realized, okay, now I'm spending two hours just making the thumbnail, tweaking the description box, uploading the video, doing the tags, you know, create, creating the title. So those are things that now I have to train someone else to do to be able to take that load off my plate so I can free up that time to be able to do something else. So that is what I mean by having a mindset of delegation or automation and not feeling like I need to do every single thing in my business. The second thing is managing finances well. And y'all know I've talked about this since the beginning, but um, as the business grows, as you have to you know, pay more taxes and you have more expenses and you have people under you and you, know, you have things that are constantly happening that require you to spend money as a business owner, you really, really, really have to keep those books and keep that financial uh, healthiness in your business because I ain't trying to hear from the IRS. I don't I don't know about y'all but I don't need no problems this will also come in handy when it's time to make big purchases like I'm currently buying a house when it comes to purchasing a car um, if I wanted to buy a building for Aaron on demand I need to be able to have very clean uh, financial records of the business so these are things that you can start really early on which you know my mom 
mom has always been my bookkeeper. She's my financial go-to. She keeps track of everything that's coming in and going out. And if you guys want to use her, she is open to taking more bookkeeping clients. So I will leave her information in the description box. The third thing is investing back into your business. And this can be a multitude of things. I feel like most people kind of attribute this to getting a coach or buying a course, which those are great ways to invest. But um, for example, for me, like I've been, you know, doing lots of video content. It is now time for me to upgrade my camera and upgrade some of my equipment and buy my mother a iPad Pro so she can more effectively like manage her tasks. And so, you know, just investing in things that are going to help you run the business more smoothly. Now, like I was saying, in terms of coaches, in terms of getting more knowledge, having a community that can really pour into you as an entrepreneur is also very important. I hadn't been coached or received any outside help until recently when I did Tatiana O'Hara's VIP day. Um, I'm just very, very particular about who I let give me business advice because a lot of times when you get business advice from people, they kind of expect you to do the same cookie cutter version as them or they expect what worked for them to work for you and they kind of project what they did onto you and I just didn't want that. And that goes for anything. Like if you get relationship advice from someone, they kind of expect or project their relationship experiences on you. So that was something, especially in my earlier stages of entrepreneurship, I didn't want that. I wanted to kind of experiment with my business very naively. Um, that was a deliberate decision that I made. But now, as I'm growing, I realized that I need help in terms of people pouring back into me. So I am so happy that I invested in her VIP day. I also bought a course on Facebook ads that I just still have not time have not had time to take because my life is just constantly in go mode. So I do plan to make more investments moving forward in terms of, you know, having someone to kind of lead me in different areas of my business, um, pushing me to have bigger goals, have a better mindset when it comes to these things. Things. Number four is always negotiate. And this has been a really big lesson for me. Um, I don't have to do a whole ton of negotiating, uh, but when it does come to new video production contracts or um, even with brand deals, us negotiating things, now I do have a brand manager who takes care of those negotiations. So it does help to have someone else being able to negotiate on your behalf for that. But one thing I will say, we can always create a manager email to do your negotiations for you, like send your negotiations, and it's really you. But there is something about having that buffer of a manager that really makes negotiating a bit easier. And then another thing I would recommend, I always recommend this book. I always recommend this book, Never Split the Difference uh, by Chris Voss. It is an incredible read if you want to learn more about how to negotiate and how to really use everyday conversations as negotiations because that's really what they are. So I would recommend this resource. Number five is automate. And this is kind of like the step before delegating, which was number one but um before you delegate and hire someone in a lot of things can be automated and there are lots of tools out there like dubsado um there are lots of like email automators like convert kit um there are tons of automators out there you guys and this is something that i'm just now recently kind of implementing into my business to streamline a lot of my processes like with video production clients like with strategy calls you know things that i don't need to be manually going in and emailing people you know for follow-ups and things like that so automating is a great tool before you hire someone it can save you a lot of money from hiring things that can actually just be automated but the mindset comes in being willing to pay for the automations a lot of automation products are going to require you to pay but if you look at it in the sense of well i'm not paying for a whole human being to do this for me that is a good perspective to have number six of a mindset shift 
was creating a scalable business model. This was a big one for me once I kind of hit my six or seven months on YouTube. I was doing video production and it was going well. Like I was getting clients, but I was noticing that my YouTube audience was growing and I wasn't seeing direct conversion into my video production services, which I mean, it makes sense. It wasn't like I was sharing all these video tips and all of this stuff. I was really sharing like my experience as an entrepreneur, some branding advice, some video advice. Like I was kind of, you know, a montage of things, which is fine. But I realized that I couldn't do like a ton of video projects, let alone I didn't want to be doing video projects every single day. I didn't want people to think of me as a videographer. My mom and I were like, okay, what is a scalable thing that we can have? And that is how we came up with the membership model because there's really no cap on how many people can get into the club. And it is something that doesn't require me to be meeting on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So when you are um, working on expanding your business or even when you're in the beginning phases of creating your business, start thinking about how can I scale? Once I'm tapped out, once I can no longer knit, you know, 30 blankets in a day, like how am I going to scale this? Okay, so um, for me, even now, we have been looking at how can we even further scale the membership club? How can we even further scale strategy calls? How can we even further scale the company overall by creating physical products, digital products? These are ways that you can still have revenue coming in without you doing all of the manual work. So having a scalable business model is very, very important um, as you're growing your business. All right, number seven is addressing your fears. And I keep mentioning Tatiana because this is something that we actually did in her VIP day. That was like the first exercise we did was address my fears as an entrepreneur. I realized that I had three main fears that were kind of blocking me. And maybe I'll do a video discussing um, more of what those were for me, but I will just say this. I don't care how successful you are in your business. There is always going to be fear. You know, when I first started, my fear was getting started. And now my fear is hiring full-time staff. You know, having someone's livelihood literally depending on me. Like those are the fears and they don't stop. And so I think that as you're starting your business, if the fear is stopping you now, you are in for a rude awakening because there are going to be so many more fears that can even feel bigger than the fear of starting. So um, I would just really try to write those fears down and write out some action steps that you can take to kind of release those fears in a sense that aren't so, so they aren't so crippling um, for taking action. Number eight is that there is just literally no perfect time. And I think that I have always been the type of person who's kind of just like, I jump into it and it's just like, whatever, like if I need to go live and I think like, I should go live today. I'm not gonna over process it because then I'm gonna stop myself from doing it. Um, so I literally will just go onto Instagram and click live. I feel like the five second rule by Mel Robbins really kind of helped me with this. It is a book, you can watch her TED talk. I feel like the TED talk basically says what the whole book is about. Like it is basically like literally, you don't need to read the book. <laughs> but um, the TED talk is incredible. I will link it down below, but basically, our bodies try to stop us from taking action when fear is involved. My biggest takeaway so far is to just do it. And I have implemented that a lot. Like I had no idea what a membership club was, how to start one. I just did it. Like I didn't research, I didn't hop into other people's membership clubs to see how they were running it so I could do the same thing for mine and try to make it all perfect. And you know, we just kind of like, we're like, okay, let's do this and put it out there. And now we're refining. So, you know, everyone processes just do it differently. But I would say once you start overthinking, you start slowing yourself down and time is money. Okay, number nine is creating boundaries so people don't take advantage of you. This was another fear of mine, but this is something that really like you just gotta you just gotta get over it and I just have to get over it because people are always going to try to look out for their best interests and if people don't have any problem asking you for things for free, then you shouldn't have any problem telling them no. So um, especially when you offer a paid service for that exact 
problem. So I am learning how to not feel some type of way even about someone asking me for free things or resources or knowledge um, and just kind of having a calculated answer. That was one of the action steps that we created for that fear. It's like, Aaron, you got, you're going to have this script and you're going to tell them this if they ask you this. And so um, that has really been helpful for me. And it was something that I was already kind of doing, but I feel like to some extent I was internalizing people who did that to me and it's it's just it's not that deep um, just know what to say back and having that and addressing that is the first step to kind of releasing myself from that number 10 is understanding the goal and using that as your guide and when you have this goal in mind when you kind of know where you see the company going when you have a particular vision about how you want your company to play out then it's so much easier to kind of navigate your actions toward that i read a quote somewhere it said like you can get in the car you can drive but like if you have no destination it's just wasted energy like you don't know where you're going it's better to be in motion in a direction that you know you want to go in and then those no's become easier even for business opportunities even things that may present a lot of money um, it's easier to say no to things that don't serve me that don't um, pour into me when I know where I'm trying to go and so I really encourage you to write those things down like write your wildest dreams for your business down write down the things that you absolutely despise doing in your business write down your ideal day in your business um, write down your ideal uh, lifestyle and and really try to get there and when you write these things down and you really kind of accept what your dreams are then i feel like our mindset sets us up for success in that way and i will say this having the call with tatiana has made me feel so much more at ease with the growth of my business i know that at a certain point um, these are the people we need to bring onto the team now um, i know that once my revenue starts hitting a certain mark like these are the things that we can start doing in the company and you know having those benchmarks and having those goals in place they help you get to those goals even faster and two they help you cultivate that mindset so that all of these things are a lot easier to actually execute Cute. So, um, I hope this video was helpful for you. You guys, I'm always learning things every single day as I grow in my business. Honestly, like my goals even for the end of this year have surprised myself. Like they're surprising to me because they're so big. And so don't be scared to dream big and to really believe that you can achieve that because that is step one. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I will also leave Tatiana's information down below. Um, she really does specialize in helping entrepreneurs get their stuff together. So um, if that sounds like your jam, I will definitely check out her website. Uh, I love you guys so, so, so much. Uh, stay strong out there. It can be tough. Um, it can be tough. It's a lot of things pulling us in a lot of different directions right now. But stay encouraged. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.